Oh, praise the Lord. Be- before we uh, get into the, today's uh, message, I want to uh, talk a couple of th- things really quickly. Um, right now, Wednesday night's lessons, we're going to do at least three weeks in the subject entitled The Deception of Unforgiveness. We started this uh, last uh, Wednesday night, and uh, it turned out to be much more important than I anticipated. So if uh, I want to encourage you, if you did not watch Wednesday, last Wednesday night, it's going to be on Facebook, and now I believe, if I remember correctly, it is on our YouTube channel. Watch it before next Wednesday. Watch that and, and catch up because there's so, we're going to continue in this subject matter, and it is life-changing. In fact, uh, unforgiveness is hurting the church maybe more than any other sin, the sin of unforgiveness. But it's the deception that unforgiveness causes that does the damage. So watch it and, uh, and then uh, catch up with us on, on Wednesday night. And all the youth, make sure that you're catching up with Renee and, and with his uh, Bible study on Zoom. And, uh, ten, of course, tomorrow night, as Renee said. Uh, I want to first, uh, it's going to sound kind of dumb, but I just feel I need to say this. Um, I want to apologize for our technical difficulties that we're having uh, today. Oh, I'm going to be looking for, and if you're online watching right now, I'm looking for a, a, someone that really knows digital soundboards because our digital soundboard needs repair. And it does things that, uh, if I were superstitious, I would say the, the kukui. Got, got, <laughs> Renee like that one. The kukui got into our board, and uh, but <laughs> what it is, it's. But here's the thing about that: the enemy will use technical difficulties to discourage people from staying on, watching, and being touched by the word of God. So I'm not saying that the devil made the board go crazy, but I am saying that. Watch out, because the enemy will discourage you from wanting to stay in the Word and get closer to the Word because of things that go wrong like this. And uh, uh, these guys, and Davia, my daughter, they, they and uh, Elijah and, and um, Daniel up in the board, they do their best to bring a quality uh, production, if you will. And uh, we're just a bunch of amateurs. Well, except for Renee. Renee is obviously professional, but we're we're a bunch of amateurs just trying to and uh, trying to do our best for Jesus. So um, we'll we'll work on that. There's another thing that happens sometimes when God gives. Me, this has happened throughout my ministry. In fact, when God gives me a very important message. It seems like the enemy always wants to mess around with what's happening before the service. I got up this morning and I started to pray for for uh, an individual that, for whatever bizarre reason, is trying to do harm to New Joy Church. And I don't know why this person, other than I don't know, I, I'm not even going to go e- even begin to speculate. Because that's one of the deceptions of unforgiveness. You start speculating on why people do what they do. And you don't really know why they do what they do. So for, for whatever reason, this, this person's trying to, trying to you know, harm us. And he, I can tell you right now, this person doesn't even realize that what he's doing is harmful. So when, and I saw it this morning, and I go, oh my goodness. And it, 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 it did disrupt my spirit. But it's not going to disrupt my spirit to the point that's going to stop me from doing what God has called me to do today. Because the message today, the, the supreme dignity of God, is so vitally important for everyone to realize. This message today on how God is worthy of praise, God is worthy of honor, God is worthy of glory and power and dominion. In fact, I'm not even going to go back. The last two messages I thought were pretty good, but this is the one that's got, I think, the most impact. I could be wrong, but I'm I'm going to say I think it is. So what is the definition of dignity? It is the quality or state of being worthy, honored, 
or esteemed. Dignity is the quality or state of being worthy. There's no human in this world, there's not a person that's more, more worthy than Jesus Christ. God is worthy of all our praise. God is worthy of all our honor. He should be highly esteemed in every part of our life. And that's where we're going today. We're going today to, to, to talk about how God is worthy. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, I come to you, Lord, humble, that you have called me into a position of influence so that I can help people get closer to you, so I can help people understand who you are and what you've done for them. So Holy Spirit, speak through me, that I would speak clearly as I should, that everyone in this building and watching through Facebook and eventually through um, YouTube, that they would know how wonderful, how awesome, and how powerful, and how worthy our God is. And most of all, may you be pleased with my humble attempt to teach your word. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Okay, let's get to it. Number one, God is worthy because he created everything. God is worthy because he is the creator of all things. Revelation 4.11 says this, You are worthy, O Lord and God, to receive glory and honor and power, for you created all things, and by your will they were created and have their being. You know what happens? You know what happens in our life? Because we talk about the creation. Not a, we don't talk about creation a lot. And that's because we're living it and we're here and we're walking through life and we forget that God created life. We forget that God created uh, the beautiful mountains that are so very close to us that we can go up and visit. We forget that God created uh, us, the Trees and the flowers and uh, all the animals are all created by God. That is an amazing, an amazing, an amazing thing. What are the two, fav my two favorite things that God created? Was fire and chicken. That's right, I said it. Fire and chicken. Get a little month, a little, little, little lard, and a little, we'll fry that up right now. Think about it, though. Think about it. Every part of your being has been touched by God's creation. And that's, so what do we do? We give him praise. We give him glory. We give him honor. And we give him power. We don't give him power. We acknowledge the power of God. Oh, if you don't start acknowledging the power of God, you're going to miss out on the power. Not because the power's not there, but you're going to miss out. There was a cord laying down over here, and I asked my uh, grandson, Elijah, to move it, to get it out of my way while we were practicing. And, and he did. He came up, and he cleaned up for me a little bit. But here's the thing. The power that he, when he had disconnected that microphone cable, that microphone cable was, had the, the capacity to have my voice through a microphone go into the system and out throughout this building. The, the power was there available, but I wasn't using that power. The cord was just laying on the floor in the way. Are you hearing what the Spirit's trying to tell you? The power of God is available to each and every one of us, but we're going through life, maybe trying to get through in our own power, maybe not realizing how powerful God really is, so then we suffer, and then we don't get the things that God wants for us. We don't see the miracles that He has for us, because we don't acknowledge and realize he is the source of all power. One of the greatest things that God, now I'm being serious, I'm not going to tell a joke, but one of the greatest things that God ever created was you. Was you. You were created by God Almighty. He decided that you deserved to be here at this time. Every husband and fiance 
in here needs to look towards his special wife or fiance and say, I thank God he created you. Here's the problem. God created you. And, and look at what the verse says. We'll talk about what's the problem in just a moment. Psalm 139, verses 13 and 14 say this. You alone created my inner being. See, here's the problem for most of us. So most of us, when we talk about who we are and how we're, we're created, well, why did God make me this way? And what we're focused on is the outward appearance. Well, how come... I weigh 200 and uh, you thought I was. How come I'm overweight? Let's put it that way. Is it because God created me overweight? Or some man created fried chicken? Huh? See, I'm not going to blame God because of the way I look. But... Listen to what I'm going to say. And a lot of you do this. You say, well, uh, how could God create me this way? I'm not, and yes, there, there, are, there are people that have uh, uh, physical parts of, of their body that, that fall short. It's not because God didn't create you perfectly. It's because of the sin of the fallen world, but also it's because of your focus. What should we be focused on first, according to this verse? You alone created my inner being. You created who I am on the inside. And I'm not just talking about my heart and my muscles and the blood. I'm talking about my spirit. I'm talking about my mind. I'm talking about my personality. You know, honestly, my personality, I didn't go to personality school to develop my personality. Now, everybody in here said, Pastor David got a good personality. Come on, can I get an Amen. But I didn't, I didn't decide one day, I want to be funny. It's just, that's just who I am. I didn't decide one day I want to talk in front of people. I've been talking since I was probably about 10 months old. I, I never stopped from a little kid. I haven't stopped talking. I told you the story before where I had an aunt who would pay me to shut up. That's who I am. God created me this way, and I'm thankful that he created this, me this way. Now, because of situations in life and, and other stimuli that come into to my life, it's, it's kind of damaged who I am. It's kind of damaged who you are. But he started by creating you who you are on the inside. Listen to this. You alone created my inner being. You knitted me together inside my mother. I will give thanks to you because I have been so amazingly and miraculously made. Stop looking at your shortcomings. Let me help you. Every single one of you in here right now, starting with this man and everybody through live stream, you all have shortcomings. You all have things that you wish you could change, but you can't. But why don't you, instead wasting your time on everything that's wrong, start focusing on what you can do right what you are good at and focus on that and move forward with that in your life. You have something good about you, and you should use that. You know what? I'm gonna, I, I thought I was going to pick on Rocky, but, but I'd rather pick on Cindy, but I'm afraid of her, so I'm going to pick on Jennifer. <laughs> that went a long way, didn't I? Getting to who I'm going to pick on. One of the things that Jennifer constantly tells me, and no, it's not about Steve. It's about her inadequacies. She tells me that she's not good enough to do what she does in the ministry. And every time she gets up to speak, I am amazed how articulate and how her lesson moves through very smoothly and it's easy to understand and take in. And she hits us where we live. Can the sister say amen? Amen. So I want her to start focusing on what God does good in her and not what she wishes she could do outside. Are you hearing what the Spirit's trying to tell you? 
It's not just Jennifer. It's Steve. It's not just Steve and Jennifer. It's Rocky and Cindy. It's all of us. God wants to do something miraculous in us. He has made us in a wonderful, awesome, great way. Verse 14 again. You give, you, I, give, I will give you thanks because you have been so... Uh, I'm sorry, let me start over. Verse 14. I will give thanks to you because I have been so amazingly and miraculously made. Your works are miraculous. So you th thank God for the, the strength that you do have, but always remember they come from God. And my soul is fully aware of this. Become aware of how God created you, the good things, and, and don't spend so much time trying to change the bad things, but focus on excelling in the good. Can I get an amen? Amen. Focus more on your inner being than on your outer situation. And remember, even with all my flaws, I am still miraculously made. Number one, God is worthy because he created everything. Number two, God is worthy because he gives us strength and safety. He gives us strength and safety. Psalm 18, verses 1, 2, and 3, and it goes like this. I love you, Lord. Lord, you are my strength. I love you, Lord. Lord, I love you because you are my strength. And I'm able to do the things that I do. One of my favorite verses is uh, 1 Corinthians 15.10. And basically it says this. Uh, it's the grace of God that I can do what I do. And I am what I am because of God's grace. And God's grace does not go without an effect. I can do even more because I'm focused on the grace of God that's working in me and through me. And it's not just my strength. It's not my strength. Learn. Listen, please. Verse 1. Learn to rely on God's strength in you. Learn to rely on... And that's a trick. You've got to learn how to do this. You've got to practice relying on God's strength. I have a decision to make every single day. Am I going to do it my way or am I going to do it God's way? Am I going to use my strength or am I going to use God's strength? I have to do that every single day. And sometimes I don't do so good. So I'm calling you to, to believe that God created you for the situation that you are in, and you will be successful because he's working in you and through you to touch lives. Verse 2, the, the Lord is my rock, my fortress, and my Savior. Learn what God has for you. He has, he's your rock. Or in other words, your foundation. Your whole life needs to be founded on the word of God so you can stand firm. You're not on sinking sand if you're standing on the word. He's your foundation. He is your fortress. He's built a place of protection all around you. So the enemy will attack but can't knock you down. The enemy will attack but can't take you out because you're standing on the fortress that's high above the attack. Are you hearing what the Spirit's trying to say? He's my Savior. Not only, did he, not only does he save me for eternity so I make it into heaven, he saves me from the garbage that happens in life today. He saves me from what I'm going through. He saves me and keeps me protected. And that I'm so happy. He's my rock. He's my protection. He is my shield. Again, more protection. The power that saves me and my place of safety. I'm safe right here. I'm going to be able to preach this whole message to you because I'm in the safety of, of this platform right here, of this iPhone or iPad. How many times do you think Pastor David walks away from his notes and starts getting so confused and starts talking about so many other things and, and he's so easily distracted? Hey, David, I like your shoes. And then... And now I don't know where I'm at. 
Now I'm confused. Now I'm getting a little bit nervous because I'm bumping into something behind me. What's, what's this? Oh, David's stand. I thought it was the kukui again. Are you hearing what the Spirit's trying to tell you? You move away from your area of safety, and then all sorts of crazy thoughts start coming in. Oh, how about this one? I bet David pushed his stand out farther so I could bump into it on purpose. Oh, come on. You know you go there, and it's wrong. How do I know it's wrong? Because I go there too and got to fight the temptation to stay there. Did you hear? Did you hear that? You have to fight the temptation to stay out of the protection of God and in a place where you can make excuses for your life. So I go back to my place of safety. Okay, now I know what I need to say. I need to go on to the next verse. But let's finish with verse 2. The Lord is my rock, my salvation, my fortress, and my Savior. My God is my rock in whom I find protection. He is my shield, the power that saves me, and my place of safety. Verse 3. I called on the Lord who is worthy. See it? He's worthy of praise. I called on the Lord who is worthy, and he saved me from my enemies. Let me help you. You have enemies don't hate me because I tell the truth. You have enemies that don't know you're, they're your enemies. They may be well-meaning people that have their own opinions about what you should be doing with your life, about how you could be successful, and they don't really mean to mess with you, but they're messing with you because they, they've gone out of where they need to be. He's worthy. God's protection, God's salvation, should inspire wor uh, worthiness and praise. But not just praise in song, but praise in everything and every person you know. Wherever you go and whoever you run into, give God praise. Give him praise. He's worthy. He is worthy. I personally don't think I personally think most Christians don't really understand the potential of God's power in our lives. We don't understand it. We don't grasp it. So we suffer through life and we do things that actually cause more harm rather than relying on the word of God to access the power of God and to believe that he's going to do something great. Colossians 1 verses 11 and 12, it says this, God will strengthen you with his own great power, so that you will not give up when trouble comes. But you will be patient. Let me ask you right now, are you facing something in your life that you're ready to give up? You've had it. I can't take this. In my, I, I hate this saying. I catch myself saying it every once in a while, but I hate it. How about this one? I'm done. I'm done. I'm not, I, I don't have to deal with this anymore. I'm done. You ever say that? You ever get to that point? Some of us do. But we need to understand that we don't have to give up when trouble comes. We need to understand we don't have to quit. We don't have to run away. We can see, go through all problems. We can make it through whatever we're facing. Because God is with us and God is strengthening us. God will strengthen you with his own great power so that you will not give up when trouble comes, but you will be patient. You got to be patient. Relax. Be patient. Don't run. Don't fight. Don't fret. Verse 12, and you will joyfully give thanks to the Father who has made you able to have a share in all that he has prepared for his people in the kingdom of light. You have all you can share, the goodness and the greatness of God, and you'll do it with joy. You will do it with joy. Praise the Lord. Don't give up. Be patient. Rely on God's power. And if you're having trouble, get some help. But get some help from someone who knows and can give you the word of God. Don't ask somebody who can't really help you. So what are you having a struggle? Don't, don't, if you're having a struggle at work, let's say you got a problem at work, and that, that person, yeah, we need to tape that thing down. Daniel, 
Can we get some tape and tape that down? It's, it's flying up. That's my fault. Um, can you see me better now? Boy, I feel like a, like a deer in the headlights there. Oh, uh, thank you. That'll do it. Amen. That was my fault. I should have taped that down earlier. We're, we're still experience, experiencing stuff, and we're, we're learning. We're growing. Be careful. It's hot. It's very hot. That light is. I don't want you to burn yourself. And, yeah, it's hot. Yeah. So anyway, whatever I was saying, say amen. <laughs> God will strengthen you with his own great power so that you will not give up well, when trouble comes, but will be patient. And you will joyfully give thanks to the Father who, is, who has made you able to share in all that he has prepared for his people. And you know what the funny thing is? Some of y'all need to be patient, but some of y'all need to say, thank you, Jesus. You need to wait till he solves the problem, and then once the problem is solved, give him thanks and give him praise and do it with a smile on your face. Do it joyfully. I need to talk to some of y'all negative people. Don't hate me because I'm getting in your Kool-Aid. But some of you, be honest. What I'm going to say right now about your life, you need to be honest because I'm telling you the truth. You got a problem, you complain about it. God solves the problem, but instead of giving praise, you look for another problem. You look for something else that's wrong. For whatever reason, you can't just be joyful and be happy with where you are. Got quiet in here. Let me help you. If you'd start focusing on things that are joyful, you will become more joyful. If you keep on looking for things that are wrong, you're going to get more bitter and more bitter and more bitter and maybe get to the point where people don't want to be around you because of your bitterness. Somebody say, ouch. So, he's worthy because he's protecting you, he's giving you strength, and he's giving you reasons to be joyful. So praise him. Give him praise and glory and honor. Number three, let's keep going. Jesus is worthy because he died on the cross for us. He's worthy. In other words, he earned your reverence. He earned your praise because he died on the cross. Look at what he did. Philippians 2, 5 through 11. Your attitude should be the same as that of Christ to Jesus. God is telling us that many of us, no, I take that back. All of us need an attitude adjustment. All of us need to change. Some of y'all need a real big change in attitude. But, uh, but everyone needs to get it tweaked. Everyone needs to, to change our attitude to be more like Jesus. Okay, let's go on. Verse 6. Who being in the very nature of God, think about this, did not consider equality with God something to be grasped. In other words, he didn't come down to earth and say, well, look, I'm the son of God. I was with God just not that long ago up in heaven, and y'all better pay attention because I'm sick and tired of this nonsense. He didn't do that. He humbled himself. He came in humility. He came in love. And he came to help to change our lives, to be the sacrifice for all our sins. Thank you, God. If it wasn't for your son, Jesus, I would have never been forgiven. And I'd still be on my way to hell. I'm not on my way to hell anymore. I fixed that when I put my faith in Jesus Christ. And I believe in him who being in the very nature of God, did not consider equality with God something to be grasped, but made himself nothing. Wow, think about that. He made himself nothing, taking the very nature of a servant being made in human likeness. He was the perfect God. Jesus Christ was, was with God in all the glory and splendor, with all the angels in a perfect place. But he came to earth and made himself nothing. He wasn't, they, they'd never really get into this, to describe his, his frame and was he tall and handsome and, and, and all that other stuff. He was just an average man with a supernatural uh, um, job to do. 
to die on a cross and to be raised again on the third day so that we can have everlasting life. Oh, he's worthy. Thank you, Lord God. Thank you, Jesus, for dying for us. Verse 8, and being found in appearance as a man, he humbled himself and became obedient to death, even death on a cross. He became obedient. He humbled himself right to the cross. Wow. An excruciating death. Oh, the pain that he suffered so that we could have salvation. He's worthy. He's worthy. He is worthy. Verse 9, Therefore God exalted him to the highest place and gave him the name that is above every name. So God took his son all, when, the, when he died. He, he was in the grave. He rose from the dead. God rose him from the dead and seated him at the right hand of the Father. He exalted him to the ultimate place back into heaven. Praise the Lord. He's worthy to be praised. In verse 10, at that, that, at, that at the name of Jesus, every knee should bow in heaven on earth and under the earth, and every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. Confess that Jesus is your Lord. Bow down and worship him and give him praise and say, you are my Lord. Confess it. Say it out loud. Say it to somebody else. God saved me through his son, Jesus Christ, and I give him praise. And the last thing I want to say, and we'll get through this right now uh, pretty quickly here. Every Christian, number four, Every Christian needs to live to please God. Before I get into this, this verse, I do want to say this. Um, and, and, and those of you that are New Joy family, you've heard me mention this before, and I, I mention it to a lot every time I get a chance. Um, one of the things that, when, as, a, as a young Christian, as I just barely got saved, but one of the things that really set me on course to, to become the man that I have become was a simple prayer. God, I want to please you. God, I want to please you. And I prayed that for several years. But, you know, after you get going through stuff and you're doing life and you kind of get it to, together, kind of, you forget the things that you used to do when you first got saved or used to do that when you first changed your life. And I, start, and I stopped praying this prayer, please me. And, and then I talked about it a little bit uh, in the message on Wednesday night, why I'm teaching on unforgiveness, because I did not realize that unforgiveness had snuck into my life and that I was, I was carrying unforgiveness towards people who had hurt me unjustly. You know, if you've ever been in church at all, you're going to know that the pastors might as well just wear a, a Target shirt because he's a Target for criticism, for complaints. I, I, get, I, I got blamed, can you believe this, I got blamed for someone's divorce one time. Now, I don't know how... I, I got into, I don't know how counseling them and they refusing to take heed of the counsel, and that's my fault? Do you, how do you think that, what would, let me ask you a question. Would you keep on counseling people if they did that to you? I did, I still do, I have to. That's my calling. And I'll guarantee, uh, let me just put it this way. You don't want my calling. <laughs> Michelle don't want my calling. <laughs> But she's a wonderful woman of God, and thank God she's supporting me. So I, one of the things that I realized that opened the door to unforgiveness was that prayer. I had stopped praying that prayer. Let me tell you, I'm praying that prayer every day, three, four, five, six times a day. For the last two weeks, I've been praying, God, I want to please you. God, I want to please you. Do you know how hard that is when you're unfairly criticized? God, I want to please you. So, 
let me put it this way. If I got to please God, so do you. All right, let's go. Galatians, Colossians 1, 9 through 12. Here we go. For this reason, since the day we heard about you, we have not stopped praying for you and asking God to fill you with the knowledge of his will through all spiritual wisdom and understanding. The way you please God is that you pray and that you pray for others. You pray for others that they would be filled with God's knowledge. You pray for others that they would be filled with spiritual wisdom and that they would be filled with understanding. Well, why do I have to pray for them? Let me help you. If you're praying that prayer and they're actually getting that stuff, it's going to make your life a lot easier. Can I give an amen? Okay? That's cool. It's, it's a win-win. So I'm praying for this guy that thinks he's... Never mind. I'm praying for him that's been unfairly criticizing me. And we pray this in order that you may live a life worthy of the Lord and may please him in every way. Man, pray that, help Pastor David. You guys pray, help Pastor David to please you, Lord. And I'll pray, I'll pray for you that you would learn to please, please the Lord. You need to do that and make that your prayer. Every person that's part of New Joy Church, I take that back. Every person that's part of the church of Jesus Christ that believes, and I don't care if you're Methodist, if you're Catholic, if you're Pentecostal, if you're Baptist, you belong to Jesus Christ, you need to be praying this prayer. God, help me. Show me how I can please you. That's a universal prayer that we all need to be praying. Help me to be able to live a life that's worthy of the Lord and that I would please you, bearing fruit in every good work, growing in the knowledge of God. So you've got to be doing something to please God, but you've got to be growing, and you've got to be learning, and you've got to be moving forward. You've got to get your Bible out. You need to read it, not just on Sunday. Being strengthened with all power according to his glorious might, so that you may have great endurance and patience. Y'all need, anybody here need endurance? You're tired and you're getting worn out and you're just ticked off all the time? You need endurance? You need strength to stick it out? Anybody? Hello? Anybody? How about patience? Y'all, anybody need patience? Patience? Okay. I got, oh, I got that one. <laughs> You know, maybe if we had patience, that would help our endurance. Just a thought. And listen, this will help your endurance, and this will help your patience. That next verse. Joyfully giving thanks to the Father. Man, make this a daily part of your life. Get up in the morning. I thank you, God. I like the, those posts of, well, if God woke you up, give him thanks. I like that, but... It's more than just waking up. All right? It's more than just waking up with folders in your cup. It's more than that. All right? It's so much more. God, I thank you that I'm, uh, that I'm healthy. I thank you that, that even, and maybe I'm not healthy, but I thank you for the doctors, and I thank you for all the technology that's helping me. I thank you for those who love me. Maybe they don't express it as much as I would like, Lord, but I thank you. I know I'm loved. I thank you for this job. Even they, even though they don't want me at this job, I thank you because I'm able to pay the bills on this lousy job I got. I thank you for it. I thank you, God, for the criticism I'm getting because it's making me go back to you in prayer. How do you like that, sports fans? Joyfully giving thanks to the Father who has qualified you to share in the inheritance of the saints in the kingdom of light. Wow. We have an inheritance. I thank you, God. There's a place in heaven. You said that you in, in my Father's house are many rooms. And you're, making, you're setting a room up for me. Oh, I thank you, Lord. I thank you, Father. I believe today. If the church of Jesus Christ would turn to him, humble themselves, and start an outright revival of praise and worship 
and giving God the, the, the words of, of praise and adoration, he is worthy, we could have such a powerful impact on our communities all across this nation. Because God is worthy. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, thank you for this word today. Thank you that you are dignified and that you carry within your very being, Lord God, the quality or state of being worthy, honored, and esteemed. So thank you for the creation that you made that we participate in every day. Thank you, Lord, for your worthy. You give us strength and you give us safety. And we are learning to stay on the rock where we can be lifted above all the attacks. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord, that you died on the cross for us. God, you are worthy of all praise and glory and honor. And I thank you, Father. And today, I renew my commitment to please you. And I want to lead a prayer. And if you are ready right now to renew your commitment to pleasing God with every part of your life, pray with me. You don't have to repeat my prayer. Just connect your heart with my prayer. Heavenly Father, I'm praying for everyone that's watching live stream or maybe even later on when it's reco pre, uh, recorded and they're watching it later today. And all those that are here in the sanctuary today. Lord, we make a renewed commitment to pleasing you. Help us to please you in our actions. Help us especially to please you with our words. Lord, I struggle with this one. Help us to please you with our thoughts. And help us to please you by doing things that will help others. By investing and helping in people that are struggling, that are hurting. And Lord, more than anything else, I pray that you are pleased. In Jesus' name, amen.